Welcome back to Community Battlecast Prime Time. Doom Tanker here with another episode full of news, mods, fan art, and your Battlecast fix. With last month's Community Summit over and done with, we're still itching to find out information about the new game. So let's kick this episode off with a rundown of everything we could find about the new CNC. We pulled together information from the official forums, game replays, CNC and Z, CNC Saga, and CNC Inside. Remember, this game is currently in alpha, which means all this information is subject to change, but here's what we know so far about the basics. The new CNC is a proper RTS, which means building bases, gathering resources, and spamming tanks. Dozers and workers are back, so maybe those workers finally got some shoes by now. Maybe some steel toes. The beta will launch in the first half of 2013 if everything goes according to plan. There will be three factions at launch. We don't know if there will be three factions in the beta, but we certainly hope so. The third faction will probably have something to do with China, possibly an Asian Union. The beta will be long and multi-phase, which suggests a closed and open beta. There is the possibility of a fourth faction in the game. Navy has not been confirmed, but it is possible. Resources are similar to generals, which means supply docks are your primary income. Supplies have an optimal number of collectors per supply pile, just like the previous game. Oil is a secondary resource that works similar to Vespian gas. The tech trees are richer than generals. We don't know exactly what that means at this point, but it's interesting. There will be skirmish at launch. Several community members have referred to PvE mode as well as a PvP mode. Power plants are back, but they work a little different for the EU than generals. Supply drops, black markets, and the like are gone. There are a limited amount of resources on the map, which means you can run out. Infantry come in the form of squads, but the squads are cosmetic. Buildings are on a grid. Rotation locked to 90 degree increments. Support powers are in, but we don't know anything about them yet. Stealth is in too. Super weapons are in. Two are the same as generals, and a third new one is yet to be seen. It's some sort of unit upgrade system, but we don't know what it is yet. Modding tools are a possibility, but it's too early to say for sure. As the engine is dices, they will need to be the ones who determine that. GLA tunnels are in. Angry mobs are in. The commandos are in. And the tech buildings are in. Capturing buildings will be similar to generals. There's no official word on if there will be a cash shop but the devs understand about a bad business model and it can kill the game which means the devs are not going to make it pay to win game while nothing official has been released from the studio regarding the game ea sire did make a post on the forums about the lack of information saying to bring a different side to the frustration some people have had about not getting all the information and more this summit which was more of a first external consumer test than a classic summit was done in an early development state normally we would have invited selected people under strict nd without ever saying anything to the public. There's still a long road in front of us till the game will lose its alpha and beta status going into full live service. But I wanted to give the studio the opportunity talking to some engaged longtime fans in full depth and send a signal to the broader community that the game is still in development, giving you guys a little bit more information about the game. And you can find great coverage of this past event across gamereplays.org, cncnz.com, unitedforums.ee and cnc.saga. Well, he does make some good points. All I can ask is, where was our invite, sire? Just kidding. But in all seriousness, everyone wants to play the game now and we want to ask a million questions about it. We'll have to wait. And sire, if you are watching this, you will have to feed us fans sometime. The new free-to-play game has also made two sites top games to watch this year. GameSpy featured it on their list of top 25 most anticipated games of 2013. And RTS Guru featured it on its list of six strategy games to watch in 2013. And also shares the list with games being developed by other other former Command & Conquer developers, including Petroglyph and their RTS MMO End of Nations, and Uber who has added some CNC blood to their team while they're working on the spiritual successor to Total Annihilation, Planetary Annihilation. And I have to admit, as much as I want to play the new CNC, I like the idea of smashing planets into other planets. You can check out the full lists on the links below. Before we move away from the new CNC, you should also know on the official forums, Alex06 has posted an analysis on the Community Summit video, so be sure to check that out. CNCSaga.de is live again. After news that the hosting site, GameStrikes.de, closed in June last year, it seemed we'd lost a fan favorite community site. They were offered a return to the French CNCSaga.com servers. And as of 5th, the 5th of January, CNCSaga.de has returned. Forums and all. A new community show has been launched by Plucky Wolf, 
called C3N. The show is entirely live and, and they cover news, highlight mods, and even broadcast matches from older CNC games. You can check it out in the link below. And now it's time for the mod spotlight. We got some brand new mods for you guys and a returning favorite, so let's dive in. CNC Coalition War, a mod for Yuri's Revenge, is a mod that's had its ups and downs. After a long absence, the team's come back and they did a couple updates last year, adding three new armies, the ancient Spartan army that make heavy use of fearsome infantry rush tactics, the mech-obsessed Earth Defense Alliance, and the Nod fanatical mutants of the Red Dawn, as well as your standard GDI, Nod, Ally, Soviet, and Yuri forces. Worth definitely checking out. CNC Reimagined is using the OpenRA Source Engine to recreate the original Tib War in a new style. An older version of it is available for Yuri's Revenge, and the OpenRA version is looking really good so far. Definitely worth a watch. Project Phantom is a total conversion for Yuri's Revenge, bringing new armies to the battle and showing off some awesome work. Another one to definitely add to your watch list. Tiberium Dawn Redux, a mod for General Zero Hour, has just released version 0.5. After three years of waiting, the long-awaited update has finally launched. Though some bugs are still there, it's good to see that this one's still out there alive and kicking. Definitely give this one a tryout. CNC mashup for Yuri's Revenge is, well, just that. Another great mashup mod that brings all the classic armies into a brutal battle with each other and adds two new sub-factions to the armies. Soviet Ukraine and the Yuri Toxin Forces. Version 2.0 is coming out soon, but this one's still worth a good play. Mental Omega is still looking for a few more voice actors. They showed off some of the newer voices, including the Cyborg Prototype. This is actually a pretty good mod. If you haven't tried this one yet, it's an order commander. Tiberium Essence version 1.52 is currently in the works, and they've showed off some new screenshots of couple new units that GDI and Nod are going to be getting. The GDI Colossus and the Destroyer Cyborg. If you haven't tried this one yet, this is one of my personal favorites for Tiberium Wars, so definitely give this one a look now. Welcome to the first ever Battlecast 10, which will feature many matches that were submitted by you, the viewers. I'm your host, Cyber, and let's kick it into Generals for our first 1v1 on Tournament Desert. Extinction is the purple USA on the top, and the bottom is Wendinho. Wendinho? As the Cyan GLA, Wynn starts off the game with a bang by transporting tenacious terrorist teams via technical to terminate key structure. Extinction will have none of it in counterattacks with rocket Humvees and Paladins. He forgets to bring along stealth detection and loses four Humvees to a single trap. Wend strikes back where and when he can, drawing out Extinction's army only to tunnel into the back of Extinction's base and attack again. Fast forward and there is almost no money left on the map, making each unit absolutely essential. Eventually Extinction is whittled down to just a Chinook and a Dozer desperately trying to rebuild, but it's not enough and Wen Hino wins the game. Moving on to General Zero Hour, we have Karo as the Cyan GLA Demolitions General on the left and Website as the Purple USA Laser General on the right of Baron Badland. In typical GLA fashion, Karo goes for quick and sneaky tactics by utilizing tunnel networks, terrorists, and technicals. They're able to do some damage which causes Website to strike back by expanding. Karo does what he can to break through the Rocket Humvee defense and take expansions from Website. The pressure from Karo's solid mix of units eventually overwhelms Website into leaving. We're still kicking it in zero hour for game three and we're returning to Tournament Desert with Search as the orange Chinese tank general on the top and Random as the yellow Chinese nuke general on the bottom. Search goes for an airfield and an RPG helix while Random goes for a black lotus and a war factory to pump out some armor. Random grinds his way into Search's base with a combination of ECMs, Gatlings, and Overlords. He levels several structures before Search finds the units he needs to engage and smash Random's force. Search has expanded to the middle while Random has been building a new army and doing what he can to harass Search's production and resource collection. Search is looking to move out against Random, and Random is there to meet him in the middle of the field. Random throws away some tanks, but it's to stop Search from moving too far forward as artillery shells rain down. Search still has his mighty helixes and they save him from likely annihilation. A tank drop allows Search to eliminate the only source of income Random has left, and after that, it's GG. 
Game 4 takes us to Tiberium Wars and the map Small Town USA. In the bottom left is Papa China Press as the purple sprint and in the top right is Solo as the green nod. Solo grabs the buildings closest to China, gaining a slight strategic edge. Solo doesn't want to push his almost non-existent advantage, and China doesn't want to engage either. So both players expand and macro up Tier 3 armies. After a few engagements, Solo is able to reclaim many husks, giving him the firepower necessary to expand to both corners before rolling into China's base. He forgot the AA, and China's Storm Riders take down some of Solo's Scorpion tanks, but Solo cannot be stopped, and he cleans out the rest of China's base. Game 5 brings Kung Fu Rabbit as the Cyan Nod and Titus as the Purple Nod on Tournament Tower, once again in Tiberium Wars. Titus immediately expands to the middle while Kung Fu Rabbit proxies a war factory and rushes to Scorpion Tanks, quickly followed by Flame Tanks. Titus desperately builds Predator Tanks to counter everything that Kung Fu has been throwing at him. He masses enough tanks to strike out against Kung Fu and does some serious damage, but a single heroic stealth tank survives, and somehow, Kung Fu fights his way to victory. Moving on to Kane's Wrath for Game 6 with Mr. Gaga as the purple marked of Kane and Combat as the orange Traveler 59 making up the top team. While on the bottom we have War Storm 666 as the red Reaper 17 and Fortrix as the yellow Steel Talons. On the map, Red Zone Rampage. Fortrix goes on the offensive and moves his MCV so he can deploy units on the front line. Both teams rush forces to this area of contention, leaving the left side oddly vacant. Warstorm masses Storm Riders while Fortrix texts to Behemoths and both of them assault combat. Mister has had enough defensive play and leads a charge against Warstorm with beam cannons and well-placed EMPs from his awakened squads. However, Fortrix sieges combat's base once more and combat phones in Gaga and together they assault Warstorm's weakened base. The Eradicator Hexpod falls as Fortrix his artillery finishes off combat's last building. Soon after, Mister initiates a fire sale and leaves the game. Game 7 is on unsound investment with Spectre as the red black hand and Crazy Owns as the pink screen on the top versus Bonus as the green Traveler 59 and Daggy Man as the purple Traveler 59 on the bottom. These players waste no time in getting this game underway. Engagements take place nearly everywhere with flame tanks, seekers, disintegrators, gunwalkers, cultists, attack bikes, storm riders, and confessor squads all getting in on the action. Daggy Man dashes forward with a prodigy and makes some quick cash with Crazy's MCV, while on the other side, Spectre and Crazy crash Bonus's technology and economy party before having to defend Crazy's base with obelisks and disintegrator. With only seconds to spare on the life of the Eradicator, Daggy's prodigy whisks it away to safety. Spectre finally manages to clean up Bonus's main, but the drone platform escapes to safety thanks to the teleportation ability of Bonus's prodigy. Eradicators face off in front of Crazy's base and Spectre unleashes a nuke. Bonus will have none of that and he calls in a mothership upon Crazy's remaining base. The Catalyst Cannon fires and wipes out Spectre's army. Crazy owns, sells their MCV, and GG's out, leaving Spectre in a 2v1 with Bonus's Heroic Eradicator. With a great combo of Redeemer, Rocket Troops, and well-controlled Raider Buggies, Spectre takes down multiple Eradicators, nukes the dual bases, and marches to victory to end this epic 2v2. Game 8 takes us to Red Alert 3 and pits Electro Casil as the Blue Empire against 9 Kilo BQF as the Orange Soviets on the map, Industrial Strength. Electro goes for a 3 refinery start, and Kilo tries early in infantry aggression before transitioning to a twin blade MIG combo. Both players go for harassment instead of direct engagements. That is until Kilo heads into Electro's base with his air army, but Electro manages to engage at just the right angle and chases Kilo all the way back home. Electro tries to take down Kilo's expansions with chopper VXs, but MIGs hold them off. Reeling from the losses, Kilo isn't quite out of it yet and still has enough income to finance an apocalypse tank army. He grinds Electro's base up, but Electro has already moved out to the water and begun Shogun production. With no way to stop the Shoguns from picking his base apart, Kilo leaves the game. Game 9 is still in Red Alert 3 and once again on industrial strength, with Waff the Wolf as the Red Allies in the bottom and Yui as the Cyan Allies on the top. Yui goes for a quick third ore node, while Waff goes for cryocopters and harasses with a Vindicator combo. Waff loses his cryo to Yui's Apollos, but Apollos from Waffs take down Yui's limited air force. Yui follows up his losses with a double expand, but Waff rolls into his base with a mix of infantry and guardian tanks to trash much of Yui's main. He pulls back, and Yui reforms his front line, bringing his MCV to the line before Waff re-engages. Waff manages to crush most of Yui's forces, but he doesn't have enough to finish him off, and Yui moves out with a column of infantry that promptly gets crushed by Waff. With nothing left, Yui GG's out of the game. 
Our final game takes us to CNC4 on the map Withered Fracture. With Carmetheus, XX, Ari Gold, Pika, and Wombat as the GDI team against Dominic12, Young Choi, Karta, and We Are Reborn as the Nod team. Both teams try to dupe the other by quickly detonating the Blue Tiberium on top of their opponents. Nod comes out ahead in both respects. They detonate GDI's blue, get some kills for it, safely capture their own blue, and grab a control point before GDI, giving the Nod team a slight technology and point lead. Nod follows this up by grabbing more control points and stealing the GDI green tib. But the GDI team cries, two can play at that game, and they steal Nod's Tiberium in an effort to even the odds. GDI cashes in on their next blue tib, and Nod decides it's best to trust their Tiberium with one of the slowest and weakest units on the field. A clutch engineer call-in destroys the scorpion tank, and then the engineer is promptly eliminated and Nod gets the blue Tiberium anyways. Nice try though. Both teams are teching up to tier 3 and huge battles rage across the map. With Nod still in the lead, GDI is fighting an uphill battle and gaining ground slowly but surely. GDI takes control of all five nodes for a few moments and their points rapidly increase while Nod's point gain grinds to a halt. GDI continues pushing and runs right past Nod with a point lead and three nodes. As we draw near the close of this game, Nod starts fighting back, but it's too late. GDI has closed out the 3,000 point deal. And that's your 10 for this episode. Thanks to everyone who submitted replays. And now it's time for community fan art. Another batch of nice fine art coming your way, so let's get to it. First off, some sweet cosplay of a GDI Nod soldier from Tib's son by Rue Mysterio. It's an interesting version of Lieutenant Zalfia by Rossville. Nothing like getting shot down by a beautiful vixen in this piece by T21EX9. Bones always wondered why I send fronts to the front line when you've got a perfectly good avatar in this comic strip. Ganasa has been doing some fantastic artwork for CNC Saga. Here we have Kane, Yuri, and Dr. Thrax. He's done some other ones, but we really can't show those here. YouTube would have a fit. Next is an actual work in progress picture by Hen Skellion, and so far it's looking really good. If he finishes this one later, we'll definitely give it an update in a future episode. And last but not least, we've got this awesome version of a GDI Commando by Z Kappa. Which unfortunately brings us to an end another episode of Community Battlecast Prime Time. As per usual, leave your feedback below or in the forums. Check out the descriptions for all the links, and if you have any news, mods, or fan art you want to send to Nod Soldier Girl, you can reach her at her email at nodsoldiergirl at hotmail.com, and we'll see you guys on the battlefield. <laughs>